Now we're going to begin with the disassembly, complete disassembly and reassembly of the frame. First thing that I like to do is remove the thumb safety. To get the thumb safety out, it is necessary to have the hammer in the cocked position. <clears throat> and uh, also remember that when we remove the thumb safety, this detent here and the detent that rides against the thumb safety, there's spring tension in there. So again, just like we did with the guide rod plug and the firing pin, the firing pin spring, we need to have a way to control that detent so it doesn't go flying over all over the room and we spend a half an hour looking for it. So my personal preference is to take the thumb safety and you'll notice that that's basically the full on position. That's basically the full off position of the thumb safety. About halfway in the middle there is where the thumb safety be, needs to be to be removed. Now it's not that's not exact, but it's neither on nor off that is the position for removal. So what I like to do is take the thumb safety. Now I put my thumb here so that when this thumb safety comes out in this direction and there's a space underneath it, that detent and the spring can go flying around there. Now I put my thumb in this position so it's there to catch it. So this thumb is the, is the important one to catch it and you want to keep that down flush with the frame. So remember that's the full on position, that's the full off position. About halfway in the middle there is the position, that's the position that's going to let you remove the thumb safety, okay? Now it's just started to come out very slightly and we're going to continue with that. And I'm just, I'm just pulling very slightly on, on the pad there to get it come out. Wiggle it back and forth just a little bit and, and pull on it. Now, uh, ambidextrous safety is a little bit different. Um, sometimes they're much tighter, but the, the concept is the same. So we're going to, again, we're going to wiggle it just a little bit. You can see it coming out. And there we go. Thumb safety has now been removed. So next thing we can do is we can remove this, these two detents in the spring. And to do that, sometimes they're a little stiffer than others. And sometimes there's a kink in the spring and that's the way this one is. You can see the kink in that spring is so that this doesn't go flying out. Now you can do that with the newer springs. Most of the newer springs come straight and you can put that little kink in there to uh, to keep your, your detents from flying out. I personally don't do that because I just put my thumb in the correct position to catch the detent as it, detent as it springs out. All right, so uh, there's really no need to disassemble this if you want to. I find most of the times when you disassemble this, you end up ruining the spring because uh, these two detents are, are captured on that spring and you end up stretching the spring when you try to remove it. So on this one, since uh, this is pretty much an original gun, I'm not going to do that. So the next thing that we'll want to do is remove the main spring housing so we can get at the guts here. Now, remember that when you cock this hammer, this hammer strut puts tension on the mainspring housing. Now at this point that mainspring is not going to go flying out, but it's much easier to remove the mainspring housing pin down here with the hammer in the forward position. Now what you don't want to do is put this up here and pull the trigger. Then your hammer is going to smash into your frame and you can raise a burr there and cause all kinds of heck. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our grip safety is depressed. Now remember that's going to be a little bit loose now that our thumb safety is not in there, but we're going to press the grip safety, we're going to capture the hammer with our hand, hold on to it, pull the trigger, and let it down lightly. Now that's going to remove not necessarily all of it, but the majority of the uh, the spring tension or the, the tension on that hammer and the, the hammer strut from the mainspring. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove this pin here. This pin goes through the frame on each side. You can see it here, and you can see it here, and this one's backwards from the, the this pin has two different faces. It has a, a convex and a concave face. Uh, I don't know if it's the correct way or not, but usually the concave face on mine is on the left-hand side of the gun, and this one just happens to be on the right-hand side of the gun. So I usually, I usually push it out from whichever side the concave face is. Uh, that allows you punch to get in there a little bit more easily. So again, uh, this is the convex face. This is the concave face of that pin. We're going to push that pin out. Now, depending on the weight of the mainspring in there, uh, 
this pin may come out easily or may be real stiff. So what I like to do is take a punch. This is just a it's just a disassembly tool for a Glock, but works real well as a punch. And we're gonna hold hold the frame down firmly. I like to put pressure here with my hand and <clears throat> hold the punch. And then I've, I don't have a hammer, I just have a, a multi-tool here. It's gonna tap it. There we go. And now you can that that pin's coming out. You can see it right there. And all I do is take that pin push it with the punch comes right out so now this uh, mainspring housing retaining pin is right there that's done and out of the way alright once we have that that pin uh, pushed out we can remove that mainspring retaining pin or mainspring housing retaining pin we can remove the mainspring housing and the grip safety this one was a little sticky so remove that mainspring housing and we'll, we'll completely disassemble that in a second. Next thing we'll do is remove the grip safety. Comes out just like that very easily and while we're at it we're going to go ahead and finish disassembling the bottom end of the gun here. Now we're going to remove this is the sear spring. Uh, this leg of the sear spring rides on the sear. This leg rides on the disconnector and then this leg pushes out the grip safety. Oh it's in the, sprung in the outward position. Set that aside for a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the hammer. Now this pin here is the pin that holds the hammer in. Very easy. All we do is we push that pin out from the right hand side of the gun towards the left hand side. You'll notice this pin has a one end of it is larger than the other so very hard to put in the wrong way. When this pin goes in this this end that's, that's flat will be flush with the frame. This other end is very has a very slight uh, radius to it and that will be on the right hand side of the frame stick out very slightly so that's that's removing that and as you can see the hammer just falls out once that pins removed um, if you needed to replace your hammer strut you could drive this pin out here and actually this one's real loose so I'll show you I'll show you how it comes out all you do is push this pin right here Hopefully you can see it from the camera. Push that pin out. And you can see it coming out the other side. And the pin's out. And the hammer strut is free from the hammer. Next thing we'll do is we'll remove the sear and the disconnector. This pin here will push out again from the right hand side. That pin retains the sear and the disconnector. And we'll push that pin out. Just like that. This pin is is has the same basic shape as the hammer pin. One end is fatter, is, is bigger than the other, and um, when it goes in from the left hand side of the frame, it's flush, and, uh, but it is a smaller diameter pin than the hammer pin. Now to get the sear and the disconnector out, hopefully you can see them right there. There's the disconnector, there's the sear. We're just gonna push down on the disconnector, and the sear falls out and the disconnector falls out. So there's the sear, there's the disconnector. The way they sit in the gun, if the gun is in the frame is that in that orientation, the disconnector is in this orientation in the frame. This area here rides against the back of the trigger. Right there against the trigger. Rides against that spot. So it sits in the gun in that orientation. Now the sear sits in the gun in this orientation so and it, it touches the hammer so basically when it's in the gun that's the way it's proximate position that's the way it's sitting the trigger moves to the rear which touches the disconnector here in this area which in the disconnector is in the up position then contacts the legs of the sear like this which rotates the sear out of the hammer hooks and fires the weapon so that's how it sits in the gun that's how we will pre-assemble it when we go to put it back in the gun I'll show you that in just a second so the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, remove the magazine catch to be able to remove the trigger and then the bottom and that'll be pretty much disassembled I'll show you how to disassemble mainspring housing do that we need to get at this lock on the, this catch lock on this side 
and that's slotted for a screwdriver. Now to get that out, that, that has a little tang on it that rides in a slot cut inside the frame in this area, inside. So to get that out, we need to depress the magazine catch. You can see it popping out on that side. And we need to get our screwdriver in there. And while it's depressed, and sometimes you got to fiddle with this a little bit back and forth depending on frame manufacturer and such, you know, depress the magazine catch and you're going to rotate your screwdriver if you're looking at the back side of your screwdriver you're going to rotate that counterclockwise until it stops now you're going to be able to remove your magazine catch out of the frame now once you remove the magazine catch out of the frame the trigger is going to be loose you'll be able to remove the trigger out of the gun no problem so basically left to do we need to disassemble magazine catch and disassemble the mainspring housing. Disassemble the magazine catch. Remember, this is under spring tension just like those other things, so we've got to keep a control of it. You can see, again, the slot for the screwdriver. You see that little tang that I was talking about here? And that little tang, that's how it sits when it's in the frame. And you can see that little tang there is what holds the uh, magazine keeps the magazine catch from falling out of the gun. Now, to get it out, all you do is rotate it just like it is there and pull it out and there's a spring and a magazine catch. Those are the two parts that ride inside the magazine catch there. And we'll go go through putting it back together in just a second. Now, on to the fun part. This is a mainspring housing disassembly and this can be uh a little bit, well, it can be fun sometimes. It'll be maybe chase parts around the shop. So, uh, this one's actually a little bit more difficult so because it has the lanyard loop here. But what we're going to do is we're going to find something to put this on so it's relatively stable. And what we have to do is, you'll notice this little hole right here. Well, this hole has a pin in it. And that pin keeps the mainspring which is in here and the, the top and the, the plungers the top and the bottom of um, that retain the mainspring keeps them, keeps them in there that, that's what that pin does so we've got to put tension down on uh, this cap here as at the same time we're pushing out this way alright so the whole it's kind of a, you need three hands to do this, but it can be done just a little, uh, takes a little doing. And uh, the more times you do it, the easier it gets. So what I'm going to do here, and we'll see how sticky this one is. I may need to take a break to get it unstuck. This is an older gun. We're going to take our one punch, and we're going to push down in this fashion on the top of that mainspring, uh, the, the cap there. And at the same time that we do that, we're going to use this punch, and we're going to push in this way. And we're going to drive that pin out, and then once that pin's out, this punch is going to retain the mainspring and the cap and the, the, the plunger on the bottom there. 